flexible working, hybrid working and remote working is just part of the industry now. So that is no longer something companies can use to attract people. I think the benefits people get offered, whether it's pension, holidays, um, paternity and maternity leave, bonuses, th those are the things that companies are doing because I think there's a lot of inflationary pressure on salaries. So companies are staying, you know, sort of competing at market rates. So it's the benefits that you get offered on top of that that we see a lot of companies offering to attract or retain their staff. I think it's about listening to your employees and making sure you have regular meetings, asking for feedback and definitely asking the questions you don't want to hear the answers to. I think a lot of clients will try and avoid it um, and actually you're better off just facing it up front. Um, I would also say it's about identifying what's important to that individual and saying, right, okay, you know, we may not be able to pay you this, but actually what we can offer in return is you can go and pick your, your child up at three o'clock and just identifying what's important to them is definitely going to make that difference in terms of them looking for other opportunities. Candidates that we're meeting, um, prior to pandemic, it wouldn't even be a conversation. Um, yet now, it's completely unprompted that most people are telling us that they want to work hybrid or remotely as one of their top three things that they're looking for. Um, I truly believe that where businesses are not adopting this approach where possible, particularly in tech, particularly in tech, um, I think there's massive risk of either losing people um, or bringing new people on. So I think for uh, VC and private equity backed businesses, I think really communicating you know, to potential candidates your, your strategy and your goals is so vitally important uh, to get them really bought into where the company's going to go. Uh, secondly, from uh, a technology perspective, really important to invest in modern technology. Uh, the more legacy systems and older technology, the harder it is to attract, uh, attract candidates. Um, and I think finally, from uh, you know, kind of what we're noticing in the market and in the technology space, candidates are really keen to work for companies that have uh, invested in diversity, equity, and inclusion policies. Um, so I'd say those are my those are my three three takeaways. We see the younger generation coming in, they're much more ethically driven, they are motivated by ethics. So, you know, a, an employer that has ESG principles is really going to stand out to them. Um, but equally, you know, in the space that I work in within the tech sector and, and, and heading up the AWS Restart initiative that we collaborated with at Robert Half, um, you know, there's a variety of, of individuals coming through that program, um, not just a younger generation, but people that have uh, pivoted out of a, a different industry into uh, the tech sector um, for the first time and maybe had great tenure in a, in a previous industry, so it's slightly later a point in their career is individuals that have maybe got a degree or haven't got a degree um, individuals that have maybe either come from a privileged setting or a, a, an underprivileged setting so they want to see a prospective employer that is going to be um, fully inclusive for whatever their background setting is.